Hello everybody, we are back from break. Apologies for the technical difficulties, but hopefully they have been sorted out uh, for now at the very least. When we left our heroes, they had been conversing with the vampire, Archer Moreland, who had some, um, I don't know about shocking news, but surprising news for them. Um, and the offer of a partnership, which uh, seems to have been taken, question mark, kind of, semi, sort of. We'll see what happens there. Anyways. <laughs> <Quest> tractor, so. <laughs> right? <laughs> Ezra, Matashtai, and Ashes now head deeper into the dungeon with the intent of uh, reconvening with Bones. But I think we were determining exactly how they were going to be doing that when uh, when everything went to shit and back. So, Ezra, Ashes, Matashtai, how are you getting to the sixth level of the dungeon? What is your plan? We'll close our eyes, we'll hold hands, and we'll click our heels together and just be there. Okay. Um, you do that for a, uh, a few moments in mm -hmm. the dungeon oh hey bones how's things um, here in floor six i welcome you here with open arms and i'm gonna uh i'm gonna increase holy shit blark your arm <laughs> don't 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 look at him he doesn't like it <laughs> what the fuck happened here <laughs> He doesn't like it. A second situation on the situation track. Yeah. Look at him. It's fucked up. Yeah, that, this is how Jerry, we get like, all right, I'm done with shit. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna tick up one on the situations tracker. So what? While you're full day. What what what's happening? How are you guys getting there? What's the plan? I'm walking. I mean, I do do any of us have a gem worth a hundred gold pieces to oh, sacrifice? Shit. I mean, I'm don't. just saying there are other options. Like, I, I don't care how you guys do it. I just need to know so I can make any rolls I need to make. Uh, you don't, I don't think I have any gems. I, I, would, I, would I, I definitely don't have any gems. Uh, I, I, honestly, I would recommend against taking a portal because my assumption is from the sixth floor, we're going to be taking a portal and uh, maybe not be afflicted with two shadow curses. No, we're not when gonna we walk go to a new floor. You're gonna okay. take a while to get from to walk from floor one to six. Well, we go we, we take the boat. You from walk from floor down. one to floor three, and then take the boat down to floor five, and then walk down to floor six. Right, does that plan? mean I get another work day? Does that mean I get a work day if they're they're boating, taking the whole day? Yeah. I'm thinking. In a moment, though. I was under the impression they were they were portaling. It was gonna be quick, quick and easy. You would we get not there at hour seven. No, <laughs> you would not be getting a full work day. So, what did you have in mind? I don't know. I didn't plan to have even that. Okay. Well, anything off the cuff? How many hours of the work day do I get? Uh, you get about like a half day mm. all right what if i have the goblins stall them when they arrive? i mean technically technically you don't even get like a half day because let's be honest like the first hour of the day is like the battle in the aftermath of the battle unless you know, you're just like super cold I, you could just be like oh well, good job getting your asses kicked, Skull Takers. I'm going to let y'all do y'all's thing, like, immediately afterwards. I'm assuming Bones is involved, is talking to people. Okay, 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 okay. In four hours, can I spend four hours making a, um, just like a, like a, it, it kind of looks like a golf tee, but with a lip on it, and it's real big to go over Blarg's stump. Like a big sticker. Like a uh, yeah, uh, big sticker, an arm. Sticker. I mean, yeah. Um, you, uh, yeah. Okay, so, so what you probably do would find something, uh, something kind of like pelvic bone esque, kind of like you know a hip joint or whatever, 
right is kind of like a seat, that kind of like a uh, lipped seat or whatever that you can carve a little bit. And then, you know, you'd have to attach some sort of like, I mean, you could attach whatever you wanted to. It, but yeah, you, you could totally, you could totally carve something non-magical, just, uh, I mean, it's not gonna... It's not going to, like, suction on or anything like that. It'll have to ah, be, like, oh, yeah. strapped on. The boy's got to heal first. You know? But, yeah, you could make up the base oh, for, like, a... Was it... Did he get off... Was it elbow down? I I thought it was up here. Like, uh, right below the shoulder. Where did he get cut at? It would have been... Makes a lot more sense if it was below the elbow, though. I'll tell you It would have been probably below elbow. I Because I think when we talked okay, about okay, it... Okay, 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 okay. Never mind. If it's below elbow, I want him to have the Shang-Chi sword arm. Okay. <laughs> Ra yeah. Razor Fist or whatever the hell his name yeah. is. I don't know what his name is. Whatever. The Shang-Chi sword arm. So, like, okay. So, okay. so because I, I, I remember when we talked about it, you had talked about, like, going over there with a potion and, like, splashing potion on the stub, right? Um, yeah. And in my mind, I had envisioned the stub being kind of like a, Oh, you in know, my mind, it was up here. He was like, no, he's real like a, messed he's up. He's like a... He kind of... <laughs> no. Yeah, he kind of no. pulls it off, and I was like... You know, was no, like, no, no, no. Like, I, I, think uh, he, I think it's, a, you know, it's a towards the elbow kind of, like, situation, so... Okay, yeah. Shang-Chi sword on then, for sure. Okay. So, uh, I mean, still kind of a similar situation, though, Look, right? I got like you still, you still have to, mandibles. you still have to make well, a, him an Umber Hulk manual, mandible arm. Okay, but you still have to make a seat, right, for it. Like, you still have to make something for whatever that attachment is to be strapped to his arm, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's what you yeah, can basically got, use it for. Yeah, you for. know, I'll do that. I got part of part of parts. Okay, sure. That's uh, that's almost. I don't want to. I will. I don't want to say like idle craftsmanship or anything like that. But that's uh, that is basic for bones in in the heart of the mountain with these skills that that he has. Yeah, that is that is something that bones can just start working on idly, and then you know with the expectation that. Oh hey, the guys are gonna be here in a little bit. You know, I'll just start noodling around with this, and then several hours pass, and you're like, "Well, shit," and you finish oh, where it. Where are they? Where are the boys at? <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so, Yo, meanwhile, I make, can, I, can I make Big Beak an eye patch too? Oh uh, yeah, that's easy. Yeah, um, Big Beak eye patch. You, you, I will say this though: you go through the process like after after you make this um, kind of like. Uh, attachment plate for Braralk, right? You're like, oh, I should make a, I should make Big Peak an eye patch as well. Um, and you do that, and then you go to deliver it, and you find there is already a pile of various degrees of success, but eye patch contributions from the tribe, like other people within the tribe have been like oh i should make big beak and eye patch so there's like 17 eye patches here like some people have made multiple versions for being big beak to have like it just brings a tear to my eye they're, they're just so dang considerate some of them are really bad some of them are clearly like they're eye patches but they're clearly fitted for like the wrong eye <laughs> The thought oh that no <laughs> big beak's just got both eyes with eye patches <laughs> over them oh shit all right, so to be from near. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make a note. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta make a note about the eye patches. I was making more a note about the the attachment well, sword scenario, arm. but oh. <laughs> he's sword arm online now. Wow. <laughs> Fuck off, sword arm online is funny. That was pretty funny. Okay, okay so uh, everyone um, everyone else, Ashes, Ezra, Matashtai, you guys are making your way, make your way downtown. Um, so, Walking fast. Um, we're going to do two things here. We're going to do um, an update on the situations tracker, two at two. Um, we're gonna roll 2d6 and see if anything happens. We get two sixes. Ooh, things happen. <laughs> things happen. Now Matt loses an arm. Now Matt loses an arm. Easy, I'll make you a sword arm online too. 
Okay, I would like a sword arm, actually. I'm cool with that. Oh, 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 no, can I get, like, a spring blade, like, Ooh, below the knee? Spring blade? Like, uh, the, so like from the first like a, movie? Like yeah, a, yeah, like, like the chick from the Kingsman movie where she was, like, fucking springing on these sword legs. I want, oh, I want okay, one of those. yeah, like, uh, what's-her-face? Camille. Yes, like, what's-her-face? <laughs> yes, Camille, yes. Yeah, oh, like fuck. Camille. My god, sneezes. Apologies. Okay. I want, I want a blade leg. Where is my well, thing? Lose, it all, lose a leg. I'll make leg. it happen. <clears throat> you so, uh, how, how'd you know. lose your leg in your D&D &D campaign? Oh, I just, like, cut it off because I wanted a cool leg. Yeah, yeah, I wanted a sword leg. So, you know, <laughs> one thing came to another, and here we are. <laughs> well, it would be a bone leg if uh, bones made it for you. It, it wouldn't can still be a sword. sword. All right. Um, that would be fucking dope, actually. Ezra, I actually got the. Damn! What if it was made out of your actual bone, your leg bone? Oh. Oh yeah, bro. That's pretty less <laughs> litty. But you didn't work with humanoid bones. I'd make an exception because that's pretty lit. <laughs> In fairness. All right. It depends um, how lit the project is. <laughs> litness so determines the rule breaking. Yeah, it's a litmus test, it. bro. Got it. Got it. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Ezra Matashtai and Ashes, um, you are making your way through the arcane chambers, um, and you are most of the way through. You are passing by the uh, offshoot be below the rust gate, the offshoot where the um, where the hidden stash of Malarican ale is, right? Uh, before you get to the kind of menagerie and the way down to the sure, like... third level of the dungeon, and you hear, um, you hear another, you hear individuals coming towards you in the hall that you are in. From the ale room? No, no, from from basically from the menagerie, from from where the the entrance the stairs down to the third level are. Oh, I was gonna say y'all best go fuck them up. And you can hear them. Um, they're talking. They're talking. They're talking quietly to each other, but they're not talking like they're not whispering. They're just you know talking casually to each other in a in soft tones. But um, you hear you hear one individual say oh, yes I'm very very impressed with that legion I, I know they hmm, I know they get a bit of a bad rap but they seem quite on the up and up um, and then you hear another person um, say kind of like grunt right and then a, a, a feminine voice say um, yes but something about them puts me off I I don't I don't know that we need to do anything about them but we should be cautious with them and then I mean they're they're approaching to the point to where they're gonna they're gonna run into you like they're gonna round a corner and be near you. What do you do? I adopt the stealth form. You're you're in a hall. You're like I, there is I'm a up hall. I'm the ceiling and flat myself against the ceiling. Okay. I can't do that. But Tashai <laughs> just goes do 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 do. <laughs> and is there. still just there, right? Like you two can just like look <laughs> up and see him, but you know, maybe if someone's not looking up they they won't see him. Because there's no, like, nooks or crannies I to hide up there. You're just flattened against the ceiling. Uh, before, before they, before they come around, uh, I'll, I'll, like, shout a warning. Uh, we're friendlies. Friendlies down the hall. We're, we're here. Uh, so you, Fireball you, launches. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Ash just calls out, right? Like, throws out the friendly um, warning. And you hear, uh, like, you can hear armor and and you know that type of stuff like the motions of armed and armored individuals from around the corner and they kind of like there's this clear like sudden start 
Um, and then you hear a voice call out, says, Thanks for the warning. We're coming round. And around yeah, the corner, the you see all of a sudden, you just see a shield like pop out around the corner. Is it, does it look like a mirrored surface? And it just, no, it's not a mirrored surface. Oh, it's just a shield, like, someone trick. just stuck a shield around the corner. <laughs> yeah, that's right, it is. It's the and, old water skiing trick, but with a shield. <laughs> yes, basically, and there's there's not, like, the thud of arrows into the shield or anything like that. So, like, uh, a few seconds later, like, a head peeks around the corner, and it says, oh, hello. And the head is attached to a entirely just like ocean blue skinned man with like ocean green blue. hair washing back away from his head. And when I say washing, I mean like it looks wet. It looks damp. Um, and he kind of like rounds the corner cautiously and you see he's in this uh, scaled kind of vibrant glittering male. Um, and he's got a trident in one hand and a shield in the other um and pretty quickly walking up behind him is a, a small adventuring party um much like your own um a dragonborn in uh azure robes with uh copper ish scales um it's hard to tell whether like it's a uh, kind of a uh, Tinge between copper and bronze, uh, unsure. Um, a elf uh, in kind of like, uh, almost kind of like wood elfy um, ranger garb, and a uh, a bugbear kind of silently hulking behind all of them, right? Um, and he he doesn't have a staff so much as like a sapling um, that he's just kind of like. Tree. <laughs> holding on to basically um but uh the the bugbear you see as you're watching he he kind of like um he just stands there um looking at all of you and he has a very imposing presence uh but yeah, the lead individual introduces himself as chorus um and while while everyone's kind of like going around being like, hello, nice to meet you type thing, um, this bugbear in the back, right? Like, he smiles at each of you. Um, and when he smiles, you can see he burrs big open mouth. And uh, a cockroach or a water bug or something like very what? large. Why? Goes out of his mouth, up over his eye, and then up his nose. And about a second and a half later, you see it comes out of an ear and scurries around behind the back of his head. Um, <laughs> no, I don't like that. Man, is that <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so this this group just kind of introduces themselves. Chorus, chorus introduces themselves or them, themselves. Uh, Chorus introduces them as uh, the the Green Choir. Mm. Um, and the Green Choir consists of Chorus, um, uh, the Dragonborn Grethen, the Elf Adre, and the Bugbear Jazal. And they are not suspicious of you, necessarily, right? But they are they're wary, but they're friendly. Um, and they they seek to kind of like trade information with you. Um, they are heading out of the dungeon. They're heading back up to the Yawning Portal. They have just been venturing um, their first foray uh, into the fourth level of the dungeon. Oh. Hmm. Made see it if before. they know anything about the tall market. See if, the, see if we need to kill them. Yeah, did you did you guys hear anything about a uh, a goblin by the name of Everett? Uh, so chorus uh, the uh, chorus is kind of the main spokesperson, right? Uh, but others chime in or or add information here or there. 
Um, they let you know that and they had uh, they they had been to the tall market when the tall market was still the tall market, um, oh. and that uh, they had helped uh, Yek um, with some stuff, uh, and so that tall. So tall. Uh, things had been fine. That the the Evitz, I think Evitz. is what his name was, uh, had showed up and there was some complications there. He was a little bit of... Um, Chorus seems a little bit um, um, buttoned up, a little prudish, right? Very prim and proper with his words. So he doesn't naysay Evitz or anything like that. He just says he was not a very likable fellow, right? Um but uh, then they, right. you know, they described that uh, they came through uh, not too long past and the entirety of the tall market had been destroyed. Um, they have no idea. I mean, they have my, there are rumors in the Yawning Portal of, of about a, a group that's, you know, just going around wrecking shit. Um, but they're not I sure who. Zach's other party. You'll mark that down. I'm marking that down. That's a, that's a Bones topside goal. Find out who wronged my boys. Wrong my boys. My other boys. My boys. my boys to be. Look, I got survivors. All right. You do. You do. That's that's true. You got survivors. But uh, I don't mean. I mean, as if we're just trading minor information, making <laughs> pleasantries. I guess I'm, we won't stick around that long, right? Yeah. I mean, so this is up to you guys. You guys can make. <laughs> as much as you want out of this um, encounter. Um, the Green Choir seems to uh, be willing to trade you information. Um, they are uh, open with what they have experienced. So if you have any questions for them, um, they'll try to answer them. But um, from the sounds of it, you guys have explored the dungeon deeper than they have. So... They might have new information about what has happened on places that you have already been, um, or they might not. That's up to you guys. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to. Already got I, a fucking team. I didn't want to make it sound like I was uh, eavesdropping, but uh, have you had dealings with the Legion before? <coughs> Heard that you, you know, mentioned them. Um. So yeah, they'll they'll tell you. Um, Chorus will tell you that uh, they had originally. <laughs> passed through with very little interaction with the legion um that they had to, had to go through the legion checkpoints but um but that the legion had been very you know okay fine whatever about it but here when they came back the most recent time they came down and coming back the legion has for whatever reason um, increased their security and there seems to be a heightened tension among the legionnaires um, something to do with the the borders of their realm being contested to the south you gotta make a note of that well you have to go back in there Well, all right. I, I'm not going to pry anymore unless you guys have anything else. got to be hags, right? Uh, it just, just if you do go a step further, if you go to the fifth, don't mess with anything. The the, the, the woods, you, you'll die. Oh. Or, or worse. The, uh, the bugbear who has not spoken at all since, since the conversation started, he's just smiled on occasion or kind of like grunted here or there right uh, the bugbear uh, responds to you when you say this and he says I have business within the wood I know it well we will be on our best and as he says this right like his there's this his he's got this rich deep baritone right but um the vibrations on his body seem to maybe not be kosher as he speaks it, it, all about his person and out of his clothing and out of every orifice of his body come bugs just crawling skittering all over the place and as he quiets they they begin 
yeah, they begin to settle and hide once more. Um, and you can see, like, there's this, oh, it's there's this Shino. visible, like, scenario where, where the other three don't look at him when he speaks. They've learned. <laughs> I'll be like, are you okay? Is he okay? Like, is that not normal? I am happy. I am saying. <laughs> Swallow hard? Good, good. Well, we're on our way. Good luck. Okay. Sorry to bug you. <laughs> uh... Well. Wow. Oh, and that's Matt. <laughs> Up on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, I, assume, I assume we made introductions, like traded names at least. Yeah, that, that was the assumption, though. If Matt wanted to try to hide throughout that, he is more than welcome to have done sneaky, so. Sneaky ceiling <laughs> monk. Uh, okay, like, anyways. <laughs> um, as you guys continue onwards, that is that is the encounter that was rolled. Uh, as you guys continue onwards, are you making any pit stops now? Or is it get to the river, get on the boat, head on down? I think we check in with the Legion just to... Well, at the very least, just getting, in, getting to the river is going to take you past a Legion checkpoint. Yeah. You know, yeah. so while you you're at the checkpoint, is ask. there anything that you want to do? Yeah. yeah, do you just like gauge the general temperature there? Because you guys are recognized even without bones. Yeah, no, I, I, I think at this point, let's let's see what the word is, and if it needs further investigation, we can react at that point. Okay. Um. So the I word, agree. the general word is, is, is there's tension. There's and they're they're not. They're not tight-lipped with you guys necessarily, but it's clear that um, there are orders from above to keep information to a minimum. Passer travelers, you know, coming through, they're they're supposed to be sent on their way, documented, etc., but shipped on, not you know, not blabbed the world to, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, you guys are. You guys are special. You guys are are members of the Legion. Um, so the the Legionnaires tell you basically in in no uncertain terms that the river the river Sargoth has become hostile, basically to the Legion. Um, they're having trouble uh, interacting with the river at all, using it as a means of transportation, using it as a water source. Um, there are. Uh, they have they've had to take into boiling anything that comes from the river or too close to the river uh, because there's some sort of uh, taint that is beginning to appear. Um, the swarms on the, the river are a hundred times worse than they have been in the past. And the dead rise out of of the river itself out of the uh, onto the banks of the shore and attack anyone who gets too close. Um, there have been a number of skirmishes between the legionnaires, patrols, and um, just undead things coming out of the Sargoth to test the boundaries of the, the legion's territory. Emma screams a river hag. And I mean, that's the suspicion, even amongst the legionnaires, right? Like, the legion, the legion knows of the Sargoth coven, has been in a tentative alliance with the coven for many years right um and you're not told out and out the cub the the coven is behind this right um but that's the whisper of the legionnaires right that that's the whisper of the soldiers that are like it's got to be the the coven like who who the fuck else could it could it be other than those fucking sea hags right like Right. Last I remember, we basically transferred power from um, one hag to another, and maybe that's uh... well. There's been there's been more stuff since then. Yeah, um, when that one somebody's going crazy, we need to find another sister or something like that. Uh, Ezra had been contacted uh, by one of the sisters, by Gurgle Brine, if I remember correctly, um, 
that Olive Stillwater, the the kind of like new head of the coven that you guys installed, um, is losing it. Maybe not sure. Is being is acting strange and is is doing shit that is weird enough to frighten Gurgle Brine. And Gurgle Brine was. Uh, in, in kind of desperation, reaching out to you guys to try to contact a cousin of the coven to try to Hi. to get that cousin cousin to come and settle things down or handle. And that this. cousin lived in Skullport, right? Oh. Slytherin, so yeah, maybe right. The cousin. Oh. Uh, I, do 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 you know where the cousin is? Is that okay? Gotcha. Then, then, then I, okay. Then uh, it's the cousin is apparently in Dwemer Core, the mm, yeah. the Hallister's Mage Academy. Oh great! That's like what twelve, no, seventeen. That's eight. That's where we're oh. going. Now we're going to seven. No, we went through seven. Oh, what level is Slither Swamp? Uh, seven is the Stone Giants. I thought Slither Swamp was eight. Yeah, exactly. Do Amarcor is in Slither Swamp? Apparently. All right. Well, all right then. Seems like a weird place to put a school. To be honest with you. Oh, uh, it's this kind of school, so. All right then. I thought I thought it was like nine or ten, honestly, or twelve. I kind of wish it was. Who knows? I don't. Yeah, right. I don't either. Yeah. Uh huh. All right. So, anyways, um, th that's that's kind of the the baseline information that you get through going through the Legion checkpoint, right? Like, if you actually wanted to go to Azrox Hold, you could potentially try to track down more information if there is more information to find. But uh, that's your that's your like baseline touch with the soldiers of the checkpoint. You know? So hear, hear me out, right? So if there's something going wrong in the coven and we've been asked to locate this cousin and we're about to head down to the floor that she supposedly is, should we go to find a higher up? And maybe not Azrock if he's not available, but somebody to tell us, you know, what the exact problem is? They, they uh, they when we... it, at this point, it's suspect. And that could be related or it could be unrelated. It might just be better to get there and, if that is the problem, get the solution. Do we want to leave a message with Azrock? What What would we say? I don't know. Tell him that, you know... What up, boy? Just passing through. Hope everything's good. Tell him that, you know, we're going to try to assist we, we with don't... your hag problem. We... We don't know if that's what the problem is. We'd be making... You could say you're looking into it. There. I agree with Ezra, though. I think we say nothing. Cool. On our way. Okay. Uh, we we send him off password that we came along. and. Okay, so... What is the on-your-way plan? I'm on a boat. Okay. I just told you the, the river's aggressive as hell, but okay. I'm on a boat. All right, then. You guys go to the river? We go to the river. Okay. Riverin. You're riverin. All right. Uh, you be riverin. You be riverin. You be riverin. Matt's pockety. Bibbidi poppity out of my pockety. It's time for the water Seven. noises. Yay! Oh, time God. to make Mitch pee. Okay, so um, <laughs> here's the thing: uh, the Legionnaires were not fucking around. Uh, it's just a matter of how bad is it. So I need one of you to roll me a d20 to see how bad it is. No, Jack. It's all you. It's okay. uh, very dependent on if this was needed to be high or low. Uh, uh, ha, ha, ha. Uh, ha, ha. Um, right, so, um, you are attacked. 
uh, as you approach the river, um, a shambling corpse rises out of the river and walks towards you. Um, it's putrid, it is bloated, it's rotted, um, and it falls in about 2.5 seconds flat. Um, cause it's a single corpse and it, it is rent a twain by a single blow from any of you, right? It just collapses, um, and expires and there's this, this, um, exit of just foul gases from its body, right? Um, kind of just like, ugh, sh skirt around it. Um, and you get, the you get into the boat, uh, you, you. Yeah, bibbity bockity, bibbity boppity, out of my pockety, the boat, um, and then you're like, okay, well, let's let's get on going. Um, it is not a smooth ride. Uh, it is the things assault the boat. Nothing ever in enough force to challenge you, right? But enough to consistently keep a uh, tense air and pressure on you at all times, and. There are, you've seen some of the, the quipper swarms in the river before. They are of such a mass and apparently of such a frenzy that there are swarms of quippers that will occasionally ram into the side of the boat. And in the smaller version, it actually does rock the boat a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. Um, if it was the larger version of the boat, it probably, you know, I mean, the larger version of the boat takes up the whole fucking river, so really difficult to rock that. <coughs> um, that being said, the added, purchase. the added annoyances, yeah. right, of the various undead creatures that will occasionally grab onto the edge of the boat and you have to like hack an arm off right that type of shit um and the occasional like quipper surge that tries to you know ram themselves into the boat um it does make things a little more complicated i need survival checks from all three of you your dc damn. is going to be a 12 damn and whether you succeed or fail, and how much you succeed or fail by, determines a few things. Okay, so, um, if you failed, you are going to take... Ow. 14 points of damage. Um, as you, you know, you either get scratched or you get bit or what have you from various undead creatures. There's actually sections where you kind of like go, right? Remember the, the rapids as you're leading, you're going past four and leading up to five. There are sections where quipper swarms come at you during rapid sections and they are tossed out out of the river and into the air by the rapids. And they're kind of like these little clouds of teeth that fly like through you trying to get your face um so those account for a couple of like scratches or bites here or there um if you failed by five or more the the stress of the travel and the the sheer effort that you have to put into it because of these added issues gives you a point of exhaustion. Got it. <laughs> I saw where that was going. So I think uh, Matashtai you know. and Ezra both suffer well, that point of DC exhaustion. 12, right? Yeah, DC's five or more. So he rolled an eight. So Which that's five. Four. Oh, no, that's four. Never mind. I'm bad at math. Yeah. I apologize. Seven would be uh, <laughs> uh, my... Yeah. So just Ezra suffers uh, a little belabored by that that trip. Just like, holy fuck. At the end of it, you're kind of like coasting into the fifth, right? And it's just like, uh, Ashes is fine. Just Rowan. Matashtai's a little like, ow, fuck. Like covered in scratches on one arm. Bites. Ezra looks like a drowned rat, 
right? Like a little bit of <laughs> static goes off every once in a while, and it's the, his hair just kind of like goes, whoosh, whoosh, you know. Um, so not a pleasant experience to say the least, but an experience that you were able to pass through without without too much issue. So. Um, once you were on the 5th, it is not much trouble to just head, uh, head through the Willowwood, head down the passage, the, the Umberhulk carved tunnels to the 6th level of the dungeon, where you are, um, somewhat rudely accosted <laughs> by some very anxious goblins before they realize before the skull takers realize who you are um because their their nerves are a little uh for some reason their nerves are a little raised this morning um and you guys start calling them out by name (laughs) you guys yeah you come to realize uh or to understand that the god the skull takers the tribe has been uh attacked this morning they have seen battle this morning and um while they were victorious there are some shaken nerves and there are some injured individuals and um and the tribe is out of sorts because of it um but yeah i quickly move around trying to triage any injuries that are still by, by the time you guys get there the the triage is already done um salt has healed what what wounds can be healed um, and the individuals that are still injured, those injuries are more long-term injuries that, you know, are going to have to be dealt with over time. So, okay. Yeah. Um, but, right, like, your uh, your services, you, you uh, Matashtai moving into action is, like, appreciated by the Skull Takers, and they're like, yeah, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Unless, can you, like, grow we're arms fine. back? Waves of snow. Yeah, can you, can you, like, regenerate eyeballs? Oh, oh, can you paint an uh, eyeball? That I can do. Um, so <laughs> you get handed. I an find eye- a rock and I paint it to look like <laughs> I was an gonna eye say. Hand you get handed like five different sets of eyes for Bugbeak again to have options. Maybe, maybe, or Big Beak. Maybe Big Beak wants uh, uh, an eye instead of an eye patch. You know. Um. So yeah. Yeah, I tell you. Um. While cool, I don't feel like throwing a rock in your eye socket's gonna be a very <laughs> some of them. Option. Some of them are better Look, than you tried the rocks. It, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that being said, uh, the party is now reconvened. Ashes, oh, hey, Ezra, we, we, hey, we welcome you guys with open arms. Well, welcome back. Hey, here, hey Bones, here, have this, and I give you two graders. Oh, thanks. I, I take them. Very nice. All right. The party is whole once more. What do you guys want to do? I have holes. I don't think we're... um... (laughs) And I have taken a short rest while we are... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you guys could go through the process of a short rest. I don't have no... What do y'all got? Y'all got exhaustion? Well... Yeah, Ezra has exhaustion. I mean, exhaustion's not going to be healed from a short rest. No, it sure is not. not. Well, what do you want? Do you guys want to take a nap here? We've only had one small war today. One small war. That's it. With it was, whom? It was small. Who 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 was the war with? Those guys over there. Uh, you see, uh, uh there is a mass of carrion crawler corpses. Um, in various stages of being harvested, by the way, um, it's, it's quite foul, but the goblins know a way to take carrion crawler, like, um, jelly, basically, and boil it down in these big pots. (laughs) I believe that. For what? Food? Uh, Oh, for a lot of different things, apparently. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> okay. There, yeah, various we'll uses. You don't need. You don't yeah. need to know. Food, know. food is one of the uses, uses, but yeah. 
there are <laughs> other uses that you might not be as interested in. Well, um, I'm glad. So, good victory. Good job yeah, for winning. We yeah, kind of uh, won. Well, well done. We, we we won a little bit. I mean, those things spit acid, don't they? We, we take those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there is, I mean, so you guys are already aware of this as players, but as characters, right, there is a general malaise about the the tribe, about the sixth level. Um, moods are, the mood is not, it's not, it's subdued, right? It's not um, desperation and despair all around you. But the general tone definitely is not the normal, lively, excited, happy skull taker vibe, right? Well, if y'all yeah. uh, if if y'all want to stay, if you, so Ezra, you're looking mighty tired. Let me tell you. Um, I mean, if y'all y'all want to rest off the night, you know we the boys can sure use some help. I'll be honest with you. What I mean, kind of help about me? Uh, I'm pretty tired after that boat ride anyway. Might as well. I mean, if you, if you need help yeah. around, like, I don't mind helping. Lincoln and... Okay, so we're oh, talking hey, about Matt, taking, yeah, Greer, taking the day. Uh, oh, Greer, he, he fancies himself a monk now. Yeah? Is that so? Yeah, yeah that's right. All right, I'd like to start training Greer. <laughs> Greer's like, Greer looks at Bones like, like what? I walk. I walk over to him. Let's go. <laughs> Square up. <laughs> he tries to hit you in the knee with his stick. <laughs> I I catch the stick with my boot and it sticks to it. <laughs> that counts a circle. <laughs> oh fuck! What? Oh. Uh, Greer's incredibly impressed and is like, teach me how to do that! Of course you gotta get a little sticky boot. First you need yourself a mind alien. Get, get you a sticky boot. The mind He's alien. like, we got, there, there are pots of goop, I can make a sticky boot right now. Alright, okay, so, uh, if the party wants to go ahead and take the day so that y'all can long rest, um, you have options, right? What you could do is you could just initiate a long rest right now um, and go from there, or you could, if you want to take, if you want to stay on kind of like a, a a normal day night cycle scale, you guys can um, take a day's activity on the sixth level of the dungeon, do whatever you want to do, sleep for eight hours, wake up in the morning, and head out, do, go wherever the fuck you guys are gonna go on the uh, 18th, right? So what's the plan? Which which would you rather do? What what are you what are you aiming for here? Anyone have a preference? I'm fine with either, well, but if we want to stay on a normal schedule, you know there's 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 stuff I can think of to help my boys out. I do like, not need the like rest. Bones got some plans. Yeah, I mean, most of you guys don't need a rest. This is basically the concept would be doing it so that Ezra doesn't have exhaustion going into a brand new adventure into somewhere new. That's yeah. that's yeah. basically the the conversation there is is like well, doing so, it. Yeah, all right. It, I, I would be, yeah, that's fine. If we want to make sure we clear the exhaustion. Sure. Uh, but I would rather spend my, well, is this like a we're all doing it thing? Or well, so we you're like... if if you're gonna mm -hmm. if you're gonna do a long rest, then yeah, you're all gonna do a long rest. But the question that we're asking, if the if the group agrees, yeah, let's do a long rest, which it sounds like that's the general idea. Um, the question that we're asking is is do you take the day and spend the day in the sixth level of the dungeon and then rest for the night, or do you just start resting right now and get up in eight hours and get the fuck out and not worry about the day night cycle thing, basically. And I Bones is basically saying, if you guys take the day, he's got ideas for doing stuff with the Skull Takers, um, but you know, it, he's open. The concept. I do have ideas, yeah, but I'm I'm cool with whatever y'all want to do. Yeah. So, well, if it if Zach would like to have things 
helped with and Jake wants to get the rest in, I believe we can make both those things happen. Or we yeah, could just go me. back up to the surface. Yeah. The surface I quit is dead. the campaign. Uh, just, just, I just quit. I just leave. It's done. Okay, cool. So it sounds like the general consensus is you all you are going to short rest, and it sounds like the concept is is go ahead and just take the day, stay on the day night cycle. So this is the seventeenth. Um, you would in theory have. Uh, I mean, you got enough time to do a, a day's work, right? So um, let's go. Uh, I guess let's start with Bones since you have ideas on what you are potentially wanting to try to accomplish. Bones, what what is your idea? What are you hey, trying right, to so, do? So here, here's and here's then what people I was can thinking. decide whether or not that's what they want to do for their time. Here's what I was thinking slash hoping here. Um, now, um. Matthew, um, my boys are a little banged up. I was hoping you could maybe help them. You know, some of them got to turn. They're they're bleeding inside themselves. They're like little skin sacks. Um, yeah, I you can. Know. I can do that. Y'all haven't seen it yet. Blarg lost an arm. It's it's not great. Um, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. And then I was hoping, uh, you know, uh, Ezra, I was hoping maybe you could work with old Pibble and Groin here and figure out where the best place to you know, maybe choke some places off or, you know, barricade. And then I was hoping, Ashes, you could help me and some, Ezra, some of the other boys. Ezra, strategic coordinator. Uh, me and some of the other boys set some traps, you know, uh, make make a little something so this doesn't happen again quite as easily. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You're strong. You know, I, I set a trap. I believe there were traps already on the floor. We could just re-enable them. Yeah, we should definitely do that. Yeah, definitely, definitely that, and then you know, add more, add add more traps. Yeah, because there really? there are traps that are active Barricades, traps on the floor choke already. Points, you know, stuff but like that. there are only a handful, so um, they can be difficult to guarantee the enemy going through. Yeah, you know, attack happen. Oh, just kind of all you know, little little over there, a little bit over there. You know, just a little bit all over the place. Her aware. Okay, is is everyone is everyone cool with this being kind of like their their day activities? You're each gonna still be able to do your um normal downtime shtick, right? Like uh, you're you're yeah. you're in the dungeon, so you'll get you'll be able to do your rest downtime activity thing. Um, so if, if that is something that you want or need to do, um, but is yeah, everyone with okay with kind of like just taking this? afternoon working with the skull takers on these various yeah, things doing a little fortification you know a little morale building all right bones specifically what are you actively doing uh of this part so because i have i have i have uh trapping with ashes i have uh strategic barricades with ezra i have um uh health management um, health Green. management with Matashtai. Dr. Uh, Matashtai is in. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, I was hoping to, to to set some uh, some 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 little some some more finicky traps, I, I suppose. Okay, um, so so we'll have general tier traps and then perhaps specialized traps with bones. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Sounds like a plan. Um, let's, uh, let's have some rolls around the group just to see, uh, general effectiveness. Uh, uh, who wants to start? Uh, basically tell me what you think you should be rolling for what you're trying to accomplish. And we'll see if, if that roll makes sense. And if the skull takers, cause you guys are doing this just yourselves. You're doing it in conjunction with the skull takers. So we'll see yeah, if it, if it makes sense life. for the skull takers to add any bonuses to what it is you're trying to accomplish. So, I've got like I've got some suggestions yeah. if you want people want to know people and maybe help. I think anyway, that that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, but you know, like, yeah, like talk it through while while everyone else is thinking about what they might want to roll. You talk through okay, your suggestions. Yeah. You know, I think I think uh, old Pibble. I, I'd like Pibble to help me. You know. Um, okay. We're we're gonna fabricate some 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 traps. We're gonna do a little. We're gonna do a little deadly deadly trap fabrication and setting and i want him to know where they are um okay. <laughs> yeah. just forget where they are <laughs> uh groin or catsip catsip's a little injured so i don't really know how involved he needs to be i think it would be a great asset to ezra you know he's exploring he knows the area okay 
Um, well, for Mitchell... Here did uh, Bones get a lot more Southern recently? I've been watching Moonshiners lately, and it's really carrying over. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> I've watched so much Moonshiners in the past couple of days. <laughs> It's just it's happened. All right. Well, now 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 for old Matt, um, Salt. You know, Salt's about the only person I think can do any, do much anything. Um, sure. I will say this day. right. Like so, from the from the magical healing has been done by Salt, but there's still you know there's we got we got general injuries exactly you know, right. Had... There's general injuries. There's basic medication right. There's we even, need some even if it's not building. actually to, right there's there's um punch him and make him less depressed there's psychology right rather than just the physicality of the scenario so there's that to consider as well so. yeah i think i think salt you know honestly greer greer is just a real stand up and morale kind of man i think he'd be a great asset to you and he likes hanging out with you so sure sure um now now uh jay Yes. Um, or sorry, Ashes. You know, I think you know, Blar's real good at moving stuff. So, um, you know, I think that would be great. Oh, he was. I, no, I think Blarg uh, I still also, is. Braralk is the no, other. Braralk okay. Bra okay. yeah, has Bra one arm. lost the arm. Right, and then I think um, the only uh, non-injured member of my my cal cavalry here is Glooby. So uh, hopefully, Glooby can show you where they got in, the path that they like to take. Okay. Right. Loopster. Help! Help! We let's get the real, uh, like uh, legion reducing defenses. Let's get those in their their kite path. Um, yep. So right. I'm gonna oh, say I'm gonna say what this ends up being right is is uh, different because I want to differentiate here. Um, I'm gonna say general traps are kind of like your set it and forget it. No, no real involvement scenarios like pit traps like or spike barricade, traps. Or, you know, yeah, like pit stuff. Exactly. Whereas the specialized traps that you're talking about bones doing, those are more like um, someone's involved, like someone's pulling a switch or someone's like uh, pressing a button or throwing a lever or something like that, you know, to okay. try to like, um, Oh, they're coming down this hallway. We're not going to use. We're not going to use a tripwire because a tripwire can be seen and, and you know, removed. Uh, they, but they pull the lever and the giant spike log swings. Exactly down. right. That type of shit. Yeah. So. Okay. Um. All right. We we have a general concept. Who's rolling what? <laughs> Anybody um, got ideas? I would find we'll roll medicine. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Survival. Uh, so I would say, uh, Matashtai, if you're gonna roll a medicine check, I think Salt will probably. Let me double check real quick. Um, salt. Yeah, Salt will give you a plus two on your roll. All right. Hit it. Almost advantage right there. Seventeen. All right. Seventeen. All right. Seventeen. Yeah. So. Uh, I'll take that. Uh, we're gonna do this in in various stages, right? We'll have uh, we'll have like failure. We'll have uh, minor success, success, and major success. So I'll count that as a success, right? Seventeen is a success. Um, you do a good job of um, making sure that anyone who is still got minor injuries has been treated. You make sure you're working with salt and you make sure to, um, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of treating things isn't just treating the immediacy of it, but being prepared to treat things continuously over the next couple days, right? Cause these cuts and wounds are going to need to be changed out. They're going to need bandages are going to need to be reapplied, etc., etc. So you go through making sure that, uh, the, the skull takers have enough stock of those types of things or are prepared to make new versions of those types of things. They have ways to clean wounds. They have ways to stitch up wounds, um, etc. And salt has most of this prepared out. It looks like you, you do throw out a couple things here or there or, or point out that I hey, maybe don't use this, maybe use this instead, etc. Um, and it goes relatively well, but the thing that is actually a success, right? Like that, that is that would be kind of like a minor success the thing that's actually a success is you spend some time with the individuals that aren't taking things as well as they maybe could you spend some time talking with them you spend some time just being a calming force 
uh, painting some here or there, having conversations here or there, and your company um, is an emotional outlet for some of those individuals. So you help you help aid with the psychological health uh, of the skull takers, and you can see the mood of the tribe does improve by the end of the day because of your successes across the board. Hell yeah. Mood changer. <laughs> Morale boost. I'm sure Rachel Mood would changer. agree with that. Mood changer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's up next with something? Uh, I got it. All right, I will, I will help with the trappages. Okay. What are you gonna roll? What's your plan to? Uh, uh, what do you think is good? The only thing that makes any kind of sense of survival. I can't think of any other. Okay. Sure. Um. All right. So you are working with potentially Glooby or Blarg. Let's see yep. if one of those is really big doubt. Um, Glooby is not of much help. Um, it is potentially detrimental at times. Um, but you actually, That's while right. you are, while, while the day is going on, you find yourself in the company of Blarg and the bugbear, the strong silent type of bugbear, um, not only helps, uh, unerringly in your task, but actually points out a couple things to you that you miss. Blarg grants you a plus four to this survival check. Dang. Cool. Gonna need it. Because I don't have, this is not something I'm proficient in, so. Fair enough. Well, ten's not bad. Ten, uh, yeah, ten. Is, ten is, is it. Ten is uh, a. Ain't nothing wrong with a ten on simple trapper. Right? Ten is a minor success, right? So what you are able to do basically is go through to all of those traps that had been um, unset or had been triggered. Uh, go through the various things, even the ones that you guys had found when you had originally explored the level that just didn't seem to be um, set anymore. You're able to go back through and with Blarg's aid, you're able to get the, the pit trap doors uh, sh shut and reset. Um, you're able to unrust some of the hinges here or there, reset some of the triggers on some of the spike traps and things like that. Um, so that you are able to actually reset the general trap layout of the overall floor. Unfortunately, you run into more problems than you had anticipated, so you don't make any progress on creating new traps, but you do get the, the existing traps reset for the floor, basically. Okay. I'll... Take it. All right, who's up next? Yes, me. What are you going to roll? Uh, so I expect that Groin and myself uh, will take a tour of the land, a lay of the land. Okay. Uh, pointing out uh, high traffic locations, uh, locations that are less trafficked if they have purpose or not, and using that information, uh, uh, investigating the the best ways to mitigate traffic and block off passageways to limit uh, threats surrounding the clan or the patrols as they're out if ambushes are happening. Sounds cool. What are you going to roll? Investigation. Investigation. That's that that's the one that I relate the most to that. I could see history or Sure, absolutely. I, I, okay. I, I, I 
I, I don't know. I, I feel like investigation makes sense. I think, I think investigation involved. is perfectly fine for it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, investigation. Um, groin is not the most investigative. Yeah. Investigative. He uh, is... Very optimistic and the likes a lot. Locks a lot. Is not an investigator. He likes a lot of your ideas. Um, but when it comes to a uh, strategic mindset, right? You come up with the idea of like, hey, we need to worry about like. Uh, traffic and redirecting flow and being able to stop things up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The way you are um, approaching it is a you know like a, a thirty thousand foot view, right? Like you're looking down on the and he's like a, he's like a, I'm right here, boss. Okay, l l let's go, boss. Right, kind of kind of mentality. So he's gonna give you a plus one. Yeah, that is a major yeah. success. <laughs> Nevertheless, that is a major success. And I will say, because of the major success, you also inspire Groin with your your strategic mindset. So um, Groin is going to potentially... We'll see if it sticks. It might not stick or not. But um, you you may have influenced Groin to move in a more strategic path in the future. Julio, serpentine. Um, just, and uh, so that's that's that. But uh, what you're able to do more specifically is you're you're able to identify three prime locations um, for strategic barricades. Now, this is going to take a little time to actually get the materials, yeah, to get them built. I'm not the exactly, right? So, <laughs> but this is now a project that, um, due to your vision, the Skull Takers can work towards these three uh, barricaded locations that can be used as fortifications or choke points or redirection points for the tribe itself. Um, okay. Uh, very nice. Okay, cool. Uh, Bones, you're up. Okay. What, what are you doing? I was thinking... Okay, I was thinking about man, fabricating a few things. Um, and I don't, I don't know if... Uh, I don't know. I was thinking either like a bone carver or a survival type situation. But I'm thinking about, you know, I've got... I've got some, uh, I've got some Umber Hulk, uh, scythe... Uh, what are they? Umber Hulk mandibles. Those are, those, those things are sharp. Oh, okay, you know, okay. Can, I, I, we could shovels. Make some like, like controlled could, scythe traps and yeah, things. Yeah, we could like attach them to some thing. Just whoosh. gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So I was thinking using those three things, um, and then I was thinking also the big log with spikes. But um, I have a manticore humerus, so a manticore humerus with bone spikes coming out of it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, oh. So so there's multiple projects there. Let's roll and see how successful you are going to be. Now here's the thing: your your ability to create these things is in no way in question, right? Like yeah. from a bone carving situation. So I'm not going to let you roll bone carving to see whether or not you're successful for this because that's an automatic success, right? The issue isn't whether or not you can carve these things or craft these things necessarily. The issue is whether or not you can find good places for them, whether you can build them um, to be in to be really usable by the tribe, right? Like if the mechanisms are too complicated. Yeah, that's um, why I got my boy Pibble with me. For the tribe. So so what do you want to roll from that standpoint in a in a figuring out where to place them or how to get them set and usable from a tribe standpoint? I don't know, maybe a survival or a perception maybe or a combination of the two. 
Um, I will let you, you could do a survival. I think that would be appropriate. You could do a perception, um, which will be a higher perception check to influence your survival check if you want to do that. I guess I can do both? So what I would let you do, I'd let you make a, a perception check, say like a, a, a 25 perception check, right? Um, and if mm -hmm. you get that, you'll get a bonus to your survival check. But the survival check is the one to actually see if it works, basically. Okay. What do you got? 27. 27, okay. So you're going to get a plus three to your survival check. Um, and then the survival check is going to be on the regular scale of... Hey, okay, 26. 26. So so that's going to be a major success. Okay. Um, so major success... Um, even without Pibble's assistance, but Pibble would have given you probably a plus two on that. Um, so, major success. I'll mark these off my material list. Yeah, and do me a favor and like, um, shoot me a, shoot me a DM on, on Discord with like, general ideas for like, Basically what you already told me, right? But so that I, I don't have to write it all down right here and now. Um, thank you. Uh, but yeah, so you have a major success there and um, you set up specialized traps in several locations. Um, but they seem they seem like the traps are, are um, they're reasonable, right? Uh, they seem like they will cause effective damage. Um, they seem easy to implement, easy to um, reset, basically. E use usability for the tribe is high. Um, and it seems logical, right? Like the, the goblins aren't going to have so much difficulty. Um, it's not mousetrap, right? It's not, it's not them pushing a domino 17 rooms away in order to hopefully hit someone with a swinging, you know, uh, manticore femur, basically. <laughs> so, so it's a, it's a logical, usable option. Um, wow. Okay, cool. Sweet, great. Um, fantastic. A lot of these, by the way, are things that are not going to be done um, entirely in a single day, right? Um, from the setting up of the barricades to the actual implementation of the traps. Like, you make a lot of progress on, on doing the traps. The the barricade uh, areas get staked out. Uh, some basic work starts with them. Um, you know, lists of what's going to need to be harvested or acquired is are made, etc., etc. Um there's there's gonna be need to be some construction time for all this stuff, but uh, yeah, it, the plans are underway now, um, which means we can I think unless anyone has anything else, we can fast forward to resting time, which means um, quick downtime activities from the rest scenario and go from there. Uh, Hi is, guys, we have that uh, rapier plus one. Did you guys want to give that to them or sell it? Or do whatever else. Uh, how much is it worth if we sell? Like 500? 50? 500 gold. 500 gold. 50 plat. Honestly, I'm fine with whatever. If you think it will be a large boon to the be the takers, first magic weapon. Um, Definitely right. doesn't put a beacon on them as... Housing magic weapons. Yeah, Everybody but now they now they have a magic, magic weapon. weapon to stab people who would look at them as a beacon. <laughs> also, it's not like people are walking around like, oh yeah, that rapier, that's magical right there. You know, sometimes it's up to y'all. It's a, the group found it. We got it off that captain man. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm down to give it to him. First one. Yeah, I'm fine with it too. I don't mind. Indifferent. Okay. <laughs> All right, I give it to him then. Uh, do you give it to a specific person, or does it just go to the skull takers as a whole, and they'll figure it out? Um, well, I'm looking to see who. 
I mean, really, I feel like it should go to one of the one of my chiefs. I mean, Pibble, um, Pibble, and Groin can both make utilization of it. Yeah, but Pibble dual wields. Give it to the quartermaster; Groin he'll figure it out. Does not. No. <laughs> Blard, Who's the quartermaster this week? Blard I give keeps it to, everything for himself. I give it to both of them and let's not what a quartermaster does. I kind of think Groin would make better use of it, but that's just okay. Me. They'll 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 figure it out. Yeah, I take it off my sheet. All right, sounds good. Um, okay. Uh, so we move into rest time. Uh, periods, ashes. Are you doing any brewing? No, I am not doing any brewing. If I was to do anything with my time, it would be to continue bolstering the uh, skull takers and either continuing to add traps or maybe martial training or whatever. This is just be... this is all like uh, this is just your rest time activity. So it's basically uh, do you want to brew or do you not want to brew? Kind of. I want to brew. Okay, gotcha. Ezra, uh, your rest time. Uh, are you doing research in the book? Sir, uh, Arcana would be what I am. Looking Arcana. For. Okay. Twenty-five. Damn, big 25. Arcana. Let me fucking check the notes on that fucking son of a bitch. Go to my players folder, to my bitch. Ezra folder, to my document two of twelve folder. All right, what we got? Got for this. All right, a twenty-five is a okay. That is a oh, bo -bo -bo -bo. you while you are researching within the book, um. You stumble upon a passage that uh, garners your attention, and you begin to... Uh, it's... How to describe this? It is... It's somewhat nonsensical, but it's... Um, it, it feels like it's on the edge of making some sort of sense if that makes sense um uh there are enough words and phrases in the gibberish that make it feel like you're deciphering some of the code or something like that the, the, that it's making sense to you um and you get kind of excited like okay all right this could be this could be really interesting this could be really interesting and then um literally before your eyes the page of the the letters on the page of the book um lift up off the page and rearrange and you're like what the fuck is this um and it it goes from being maybe i'm figuring this out to complete and utter gibberish um and and at first it's really frustrating um, until it, it occurs to you that you're looking at it in the wrong way. Um, and so you spend a few minutes trying to like figure out, oh, am I reading this wrong? Can I, do I read it backwards? Do I read it? And until you, you, you realize almost stumbling by accident, um, that it's actually looking at it literally like the wrong way. Um, because you accidentally tilt the book. Uh, and it reads just like a regular uh, arcane script. Um, and it is burned into your mind in an instant. Uh, you learn to cast the mislead spell. What the fuck is that? I've never heard of that. Yeah, you never heard of that neither. Yeah, I have no idea what that one is. Why have I never heard of this? Is it new? Fifth level illusion. Nope, Emoji it's not spell. new. Been around for ages. Oh, is it shitty? 
I mean, it, no. I don't know. It's, it's situational. It, yeah, it's fifth level. It's illusion. Wow. It's a fifth bard wizard spell. So it's yeah, it's very situational. Great. Um, and just like that, right? Like the the book does this weird arcane mumbo jumbo and kind of inserts knowledge directly into your brain, Ezra. Um, and it's like this, like, oh shit, right? Kind of like moment where it's like seared into your mind and, and it's shocking. Um, and then the moment passes and the, the pages are once again lifeless from the book. Oh boy. What an interesting spell. <laughs> it's kind of like an interesting weird precursor to the trickster cleric double you know kind of thing yeah. like I'm like I, I was i keep i'm like oh that's cool that means like you can get away and then i'm like wait you can still hear and speak and do all this stuff through it and i'm like what the fuck is this spell? It's more of like a it's more of like a preparatory thing. I feel yeah. like right, like, like it's, if you're put in a shitty situation. Well, it's like it's like, hey, I've got this meeting at this bar, this seedy ass bar where I might get jumped. Right, like oh, I'm gonna go to the building next to it, and then I'm gonna fucking like have me. this this illusory me walk into the bar, and I can see and hear, you know, out of it that yep. type of thing. And at a, you could just vanish at any point basically yeah. at least to their perspective it looks like you just disappear kind of kind of neat anyways that happens uh moving on uh matashtai are you doing anything from your eight hour rest are you working on any talismans yeah i'm gonna make a talisman. okay gotcha um sounds good bones do you gotta are you gonna be working on something chop shopping carver carva do, yeah, some, do, do some line work. Uh, yeah, I'll do some. Okay, sounds good. All right. uh, I'll, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'll take a day to upgrade something or start something. Yeah, two absolutely. Just, uh, just take note of it, and we'll, we'll finalize things later. Uh, impromptu work time. Okay, so um, resting happens. It is, uh, you all are awoken uh, on the morning by activities within the uh, Skull Taker camp. Um, strange smells, at, uh, a sweet smell on the air um, as some, what basically amounts to a funnel cake made from carrion crawler fat <laughs> is, Love it. is Love it. made up for the morning so you know um nice. yay uh i need each of you to roll me a wisdom saving throw we do yeah okay. each of you all of you Natural 20, baby! Woo! Natural 20 for a 19, baby! Yeah, natural 20s! Double woo! Natural, natural one! Also natural! Woo! natural! Yay! Ran the gamut on that one! All right. Oh. Um... Damn it, Jay. What? That wasn't a con save. Look, we were rolling nats. Ashes disappears, banished to another dimension. Are you gonna disappear up to the yawning portal, sit at the portal, and stare down at the hole again? Okay, cool. Um, so it is the 18th of Hammer. The day is yours. Well, what do you do? What is the plan? Can we finally oh, explore. I want to explore. I'm, I'm, I've been ready to explore. I was prepared. So I was. Long. I was. I was whittling on a little sword arm because I expect y'all to be here, and then Ezra's plum exhausted. You know, I don't, what are we supposed to do, dude? Did he, he, the river was crazy? Like, yeah, the, he, he's he's not saying he wasn't blaming you. He was saying like, I God, it was it was crazy. Just like the the blackheads on Jeremy's nose. <laughs> rude. 
Oh, All right, well, how dare someone point out my facial flaws? Oh no! So, okay. What shall so I we're, do? We're going down to eight. Did you guys? I, I'm pretty sure this portal with this big giant stone key that I have on me right now, or maybe I gave to Mitch. I'm not really sure. Um, uh, goes down to Slither Swamp. That's what it says. Yes, the, that, the, that the is old our, Dwarven rhyme. That, or that the, is our estimation. Yes. Okay, so is that what you wanted to? go or do you want to go back down to seven and try and find the actual way do i like either of my options no <laughs> I mean... okay so i just want to make sure you ezra want to portal into somewhere without a path of egress i have my dome i can at least yeah. give myself a little bit of a barrier maybe i mean i'm okay Doesn't with the dome but... take like 10 minutes to cast it does yes and die while I'm casting it. <laughs> Everyone, just hold them off for like 60 Ten rounds. <laughs> or wait, is that 100 rounds? I, I, I oh, mean, really, the question, the, the question comes down to if we want to risk it with the Giants. Uh, the best I could find while I was uh, up uh, topside researching is that whatever the impact was of that dragon needs time to um, subside. Whether or not it's been enough time... It's been like a week. I don't know. But there is a chance that they attack without question, and... Um, Maybe we just try to avoid them. Yeah, just stealth our way through the area. We yeah, know, it's, it's got to be on the other side, right? We've already explored one side pretty pretty well. Stealth, that's our middle name. Yeah, right. All of us can be invisible. Yeah, chink, chink, that chink, chink, chink. Ash, just take your armor off. Mossy yeah. walks walks uh, up. Yeah, why the fuck do you need armor? You take half up. damage anyway. Yeah, hey, hey, Mossy, I was just about to come find you. We're about to head out. You coming, yeah? Kind of grumbles at you. Sure. Awesome. Where are we going? Well, swamping down down it, where... it might be the first in... time you actually see mossy is like uh, kind of like uh -oh. response like uh. i mean if you want to hang out here you can but i, I sure would like enjoy swamps. having you i'll Man, go hate swamps they're wet yeah he's a rock he don't like being wet he, he likes being he, near the stream wet Rocks what? don't like Hold on, hold on. Do, do Zorns have nerve endings in the rock carapace of their body? I mean, turtles shells have Because he's nerve. a rock doesn't mean he can't feel. That's what I'm asking. He's an elemental. The world may never know. I feel like no one has answered my question. You've just expressed. <laughs> I, and I am and intentionally not, not answering the question. I'm just letting it stay there. <laughs> I'm going to say yes. Okay, where, where did we land okay. on? Where then did we land on? Go through head, portal. Dorn have nerve endings in their rock carapace. Okay, well, I, go, I, go through portal, potentially get whammied into new place. And have no clear path of egress or brave giants maybe not make it there but probably have I a clear path of egress i absolutely vote not portals unless we need to use portals okay so we're going so he's the only one that's expressed any kind of opinion for or against so we're going to seven okay i look at seven and, yeah, and i i agree there's there's potentially if we're um undetected uh, uh, a couple of spots before we get to there, um, where Mad Goth's castle was located, that central spire, uh, that we could poke around. But one of those places is near where those um, bears. No, there's no freaking way it's not on the other side of that ca that that crater. There's no way. I mean, to the north, there's over by the bears. There's that weird western path. Where's the dang map? Uh, and there's a couple of them down to the south. Six. Uh, like there, there's a couple of things that, that potentially could just be a way down that is not interacting with the giants. 
Okay, so here's my only problem with checking out what's near the bears, is that it's near the bears, and that they enjoyed the bears. So... I mean, we could have you go invisible and check to see if that's the way. Yeah, but bears smell things. Then take uh, a bath. Well, well, I mean, <laughs> I got another option. I've got the staff of ethereal now, where I can just enter the ethereal plane and go check out what's down there. You can just do that for free? Yeah, once once a day. How long well, does it last? It last? An hour. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, it's like a really good staff. Well, and it lets you like... see things in the ethereal plane, too. But what if the passage is not ethereal? What if it doesn't it's ethereal? Have to be. So it allows you to see objects and etc. stuff on the material plane. You just can't interact with them. Okay, you you can see ethereal and ethereal. He hmm. is in the ethereal plane and and able to detect material planes. Correct? What if there's some crazy like ethereal giants though? Well, then that'd be a problem. <laughs> and you can you just exit the, the plane whenever as well. I would assume it's it's just it's like a concentration spell. If I drop concentration, I exit it. Mm. Okay, so we could enter on six and just like wait at the like I don't know, right before the mouth of that cave and just let you go and look near the burrs. I mean, go or... hang up by the mouth of fifth. Burrs. If you run, if you're running for like an hour, right, you can cover some ground. Yeah, no, I can cover a lot of ground actually. Uh, but you me, really only have, like, it. you have half an hour. You got half an hour to run, and run, run half an hour back. Yeah, it's okay. So the spell is etherealness, um, with a change that it doesn't last the eight hours, like it says. It only lasts one hour. So, ba 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 Lord of mercy, eight hours? We should have just sent you down here. Um, you can use your action to dismiss, dismiss the spell. During the time, you can move in any direction, move up or down every foot of... Foot of movement costs an extra foot, so it. I have to. His move speed is cover less ground. Yeah, it's but difficult I mean, to win. But I mean, again, in in in, in reality, it's Matashtai. He's super fast. It. Yeah. If we math this out, you're still going to be able to cover it's, a it's crazy 50 amount feet of a turn. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's still, it's something absurd where he could move like five miles an hour or yeah, something. Exactly. Thing. Right. So we're we're not gonna we're not gonna hash that out. It's go, it's basically gonna be a, a scenario of like it's not distance, it's time. Right. Like how long do you spend doing stuff? Um, can I go straight down? You can potentially do a lot of things, but <laughs> not against that. Remember where with you that. are. <laughs> Uh, you might want to go remember where you to, are. Yeah. Straight to my artifacts, grab those, and come back. Yeah, because see, it's actually, it's not 1, 2, 3, 4. It's 1, 25, 17, 7, 6, 5. <laughs> oh, I just stumble into house or study. Hello there. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> but yeah, so like, I, I could scout things that were uncomfortable with uh, bones being physically near yeah sounds good okay let's do it so okay so do we want to say you go north i go south or do we want to what what do we want to do i think that's a decent idea like that way we can cover two can areas go and... well i don't want to go near the bears which smell things yeah why, why don't you cover south and then um where should we... We have to pick a spot to meet back up, because obviously... We're going to have to come back... I I think, like, right at the mouth, you see where it says to the sixth? Hold on, let me bring the map up real quick. Yeah, that's that's where Ashes and I will... Uh, I think y'all just chill out there. With if you have to, sometime. just, like, bail. Okay. So, I'm checking up next to the E. Yep. Yeah, so you go up to the E and work your way around as far as you can up there, and I'll go down down towards those double paths Correct. down there and work my way around as much as I can. And then uh, the other two are just chilling near the exit to the sick. Yeah, and let's say, let's do this. Let's see, let's get even safer, right? Let's, uh, let's say if you, um, if you are leaving of your own volition, you should leave something there 
to know for us to know what 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 what, what do you guys have that you can leave that's like oh like the people at the entrance yeah like if if uh if if like stuff's hot and you guys have to like leave and go back to the six you can like drop something nonchalant mm. on the ground mm. but that's if you get like abducted right that's obviously not going to be there and we're gonna have to go giant hunting and it's gotta be something innocuous that people wow. aren't gonna be like, "Oh, I gotta have that." Holy fucking up. shit! You guys planning things out is so strange. I got a water, water skin. You want to? Oh, we got water, water skin. <laughs> I got I got poles. I got water skins. Um, I, I, got I got a bar stool. I got a bar stool, dude. No one's gonna think about a bar stool. <laughs> oh, we gotta take this bar stool. With us. Okay. And there's like, what the hell? How's a I bar stool here? So. I, 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 I mean, I've got vials of ink. I can just take for a vial clarity. of ink and, and pour it on the wall or some shit. For clarity, oh. okay. you guys are heading down to the seventh level of the dungeon with the intent of passing through the seventh level, hopefully undetected, to the eighth level. Correct? Step one is go down to six or seven. Yeah. Matt starts scouting, I start yes, scouting. Jeremy. We come back, yeah, and then hopefully hopefully one of us finds the path, and then we try and pass down. Okay, so... I'm gonna... Prior to a situation uh, devolve or ending up being a... You arrive at the 8th level of the dungeon and then go, Oh, fuck. Um, I'm going to say... While you all are breaking your fast this morning on the 6th level and discussing what you are doing, um, you're not being quiet about it, which is good because Risk croaks behind you and goes, Oh, you're going to Slither Swamp? I mean, we need to find the entrance yeah. first, and then we were going to collect you, but yes. Because it didn't sound like that's what you guys were going to do. It sounded like no. you were going to get to Slither Swamp. We were probably going to remember him hearing about Our discussion exactly. with Risk. I, I remember specifically my promise to Risk was that we would find a safe route there first and then come back and collect him. Again, so that so my scenario was, was the situation. And if that's what you guys want to do, by all means, I'm just actively trying to avoid the situation where you guys... Go through this rigmarole, <laughs> find yourselves in the slither swamp, and then go. Oh shit, we left risk. Do we go? Do we go back? Do we like sneak our way back through the giant lands yeah. now <laughs> and do this again? Like, well, do we? Yeah, I mean, this, like, like if you guys want, we can bring him. Let's yeah, just he bring can him with the with ashes and me. That's fine. It's it's up to you guys. Yeah, he can chill with you guys, and we'll just make sure that the route we find is like super safe. We, yeah, we can make sure of that. We're gonna we make see if there sure. is a safe route. Risk is gonna die in combat with the stone giants. Gotcha. Understood. Look, I swear to God, I, I will say... stuff him in the bag of holding. He can survive for a few minutes. <laughs> he can survive for a while. I bet. I bet you he can hold his breath for a good long while. Yeah, bullywogs. Surely they can hold them their breath for hours. At least an hour. That's an hour and five minutes there. You're amphibious. You have Jesus. amazing lung capacity. Amazing lung capacity. Amazing. Amazing lung capacity. Jay, why do you have no HP? Jay counts up now. Well, why are you looking at his HP? I have no HP. What? Why are Jay. why are ashes and Matashtai missing health? I'm at 92 and 92. I, I don't know. Let's not be synced up with character sheets then. Okay, so we're agreeing on bottle of ink on the wall. If you leave of your own volition. Uh, I've got a bottle of ink. I've got a bottle of oil. Yeah, why don't you, why don't you just ink it up? I mean, yeah, oil so. is less detected. You can just drop a water skin. You want you to, make sure you I leave the symbol of our, of our team. I don't want to pick up and just grab and walk away. I, oh my god, you guys could be the water skins. Yeah. Oh, the water skins. Oh my god, you guys could be the four skins. Oh, oh we could be the, ta yeah. the, the tactical water skins. No. Because there's four of you. <laughs> we were real close to picking a name last time. I, I don't know. I think I might have given up. 
All right. Okay, so whatever. You're going to put some viscous item <laughs> on the wall. There's in the put heat of the moment on the wall. In the heat of okay. the moment, there's going to be a thing put on the wall. Let's let's go. Let's let's make it let's go. I'm ready. Let's go. We're ready. We're waiting for you, man. <laughs> No, you guys, were, you guys were determining what you You're were going to do as, like, I mean, let's go. as, let's as go. here's the sign we're going to leave when we run away. All right. Um, if, they you, don't, if they don't leave it, obviously they got abducted. You create a, an entire baggage train, um, a supply train leading down to the seventh level of the dungeon. <laughs> And so you guys are you guys are heading down right um and you reach that threshold in between the sixth and the seventh right you're you're a bit ado by these skull takers um there's uh there's actually like a little like seeing off of not you guys but of risk right uh where the skull takers are like if, if you if, come back right like you know like come visit blah, blah 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 you know that whole thing right assuming that risk is actually going to make it to his homeland and not horribly be mutilated on the oh. trip there um so uh, <laughs> the, but the skull well, takers what real quick so the the seventh level is super cold if i remember right yes yeah. Does Risk have some clothes? He a little amphibian. He gonna fucking freeze and hibernate. Um, he will be fine, right? Like, uh, his tribe has explored portions of the seventh level. They don't just immediately freeze over, right? But it's gonna be, it's absolutely gonna be a scenario of, like, preferably don't, don't spend the night there, right? Like, that could like, probably not he... be a thing. Is he less okay. resistant than say us? Like, cause if we're gonna go scout for an hour and he's just chilling out. No, he's 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 not gonna like freeze to the bone or anything. He's not gonna suffer any. As long as it will not be a detrimental thing, I'm fine he, with. He okay. won't suffer yeah. any immediate malice. It's if he had to stay there for a length of time, the climate would probably be unsuitable. I.e., he probably would have difficulty. Um, he might suffer exhaustion from resting in the seventh level rather than um healing exhaustion basically oh well we have no reason to do that Ex ever, exactly so. right like you have no e even if you fail here the the plan i assume would be to just return to the sixth right so there's no yeah. reason for you guys to to probably be concerned about remaining in the seventh for a, an additional amount of time that being said yes you do hit that threshold as you are going down to the seventh where it is suddenly just deathly cold right your your breath frosts out in front of you and um when you arrive on the su seventh um which i will actually go ahead and move you guys on over there um Map. Um. Uh, Magic. So what it is? What is it that you actually want to do? So, Matashtra is gonna etherealness and start exploring to the north, and Bones is just gonna stealth and go exploring to the south and well, turning straight up invisible. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> okay. So okay. I'm gonna, okay. I'm so gonna is, walk. I'm gonna walk to like over here. Before I turn on Ethereum, just to like save a little bit of time. And scope so out the terrain. Can you be Walk. from your mislead clone? And then I'm like, I'm going to pop my staff and go. Pew. Okay. Um. Sounds. Bibbidi boppity out of existency. Sounds like a plan. I got three hours of invisibility. <laughs> so, so I'll, what's the. What's our. Is our plan to. Go for half an hour and then come start coming back. Is that what's going on? Yeah, let, yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, well, I will, I guess, try and make that work with no sense of time at all. <laughs> no sense of time? Does Bones have no sense of time? I just don't know how you would possibly figure that. No, like, I've been gone for like five minutes. I've been gone for ten minutes. I mean, I've fucking been wing gone it. gone for fifteen minutes. Okay, what's, the uh, fast, what's the fastest thing you can craft using your bone crafting stuff? I don't know. Normal uh, bullshit? Toothpick? Like a, nor like a normal like ass a bone knife. How long does that take you? I mean, I can do that in a short rest. Alright, so about halfway through making a dag, that's when you come back. 
Okay. <laughs> He's trying to put it in time terms that Bones would understand. I'm just trying to make this Bones <laughs> just don't think it works. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's uh, let's do this in kind of like chunks. Uh, I'm gonna take Bones to the south where you guys last um, did your thing, um, and I'm gonna take uh, Matashtai north towards the um, bears. Um, we're going to start with Matashtai. Matashtai, you are in the ethereal realm. Uh, you, Everything around you is... Um, it's right. like... It's basically when Frodo puts on the ring, right? Everything yeah. is yep. gray and shadow and yeah. like horrible windiness. Like, um, it, it's not pleasant. It's not like a, ooh, I'm in the ethereal realm. Yay! It's like a... It's a nightmare-fueled landscape. And... You see things out of the corner of your eyes, things that are not there. You see clinging shadows that rake along the walls. You see what look to be like manifestations of that shit that is around the the tubes when you take the gates. You see little mm -hmm. glimmers of that here in the ethereal realm. And it you, you hear Valina in your mind, you say, "That that's not that can't be good. I was going to say, like, we haven't really talked about it, but, like, would Valena display differently? Like, would she be, like, walking next to me in the ethereal plane? I don't know. She could be, potentially, if you want. I think that'd be kind of cool. I don't, like, I don't know that she would be, anything, like, full-bodied, but, like, but she would be, like, um, you know, like, wavy, slightly transparent form, kind of, like, there. That'd be kind of cool. Right? Um, but, uh... Uh, aside from that, though, there. Roll a uh, roll an intelligence check for me. Well, I'm a dum dum though. Oh well, roll an intelligence check for. Me. Intelligence. Uh, oh, ten. Dum dum. Um, I mean, this is cause some this is some newfangled magic. You're you're not super experienced with it, but this place is fucking. This is kind of scary. Like, this is fucking creep. creepy, creep, creep. weird shit. Um, right. So, that being said, though, you are able to press northward. And as you do, um, you come in range, both uh, for you, sight and... Um, what can, does it, You hear in etherealness? Yeah, you can hear and see... I'm okay. assuming you can't smell, but... Uh, yeah, probably a disconnect there. But um, you come upon uh, the the cave bear um, den that Bones had described to you previously. Um, and there are two massive cave bears just lounging in here that are completely unaware of your presence. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. I like that. Okay. Um, let's go top left first. Oh, that's... Uh... A baby. As you pass next to one of the cave bears, it shifts and raises its head and looks directly at you. Damn, can I see ghosts? After seeing that it's just baby bears in here, I step away it, from it, the baby bears. It doesn't... It, it's very apparent after a split moment, right? Like that the bear doesn't see you, right? But it's almost as if there's some sort of, like, sixth sense kicking in the natural instinct of the animal that it senses yeah. the presence of some creature and its hackles are raised, right? It's, it's put on edge. But it can't see you, it can't smell you, it can't hear you. It doesn't... It, there's I'm nothing a there for it to be but yeah it's basically it's like an animal reacting to a ghost it's like it's it's got the shiver up its spine and it's like something's not right right like it has that sixth sense moment that you're there um and then you get the fuck out basically <laughs> yeah i ain't looking to fuck with no baby bears okay um where are you um... going from here Okay, um, looks like we didn't fully explore here. I'll go this way. Okay, um, so you oh, start to... in a wall. Yep. Or you're in a wall? There you go. I'm, I, like, I, stuck I, on I that. I un-in okay. a wall you. Okay, thank you. Yep, yep. Um, so as you start to move around here, 
Um, let me describe some things to you. It's been a while since I've gotten to do this. So as you move through here, there are there are these natural looking columns of rocks supporting the cave ceiling here. Um, the walls are filled with unfinished carvings of kind of like lanky giant humanoids. Uh, some are are kind of like abstract almost like barely barely even touched and then others are relatively kind of like far along um but they just each and every one of them just kind of seems to stop like it's uh it's like in the process of being made and then just not touched anymore um but other than that this little section of the cave is empty okay continue on um okay uh, so you I'm head further in. into this cave kind of like into the back of this oblong section of cave and the cave's walls here are bereft of the stonework and carving that were in the kind of like prior room um but resting on the floor at the north end of this little cavern are a a bunch of odd stone devices a set of two large smooth rocks uh, attached to each other by a stone handle um, and then a stack of circular looking stone plates with holes bored through them them holes mm. they up them holes strange but not quite what i'm looking for so i'll just kind of move on for now um i'm gonna head back towards the burrs they're just like men are my... only foretold oh uh, i see there's so, a person so there. you start heading northeast from the from the bears um and there's this curving tunnel that is wrapping eastward and you see just kind of like in the tunnel kind of like curled up um like in a u shape with his, his shoulders and head on one side and his feet kind of like propped up on the other side is this uh giant not not just any giant this is um this is kurok this is the giant that aggressed upon you um in your previous encounter the the elder son of the family right um, but he looks pale yeah. and hearty, um, and he's just, he's just napping here in the tunnel. God, I want to fuck with him, but I'm not gonna. Uh, Do it. <laughs> bitch if you don't. <laughs> no, because then they're alerted to our presence and they'll come looking for us. Um, True. okay. Um, it looks like that tunnel connects to that other one. Um, how long roughly has it been? Pretty short, right? Not even ten minutes, maybe. Okay, then I'm gonna explore. Because again, this is further. the concept that you're not, you're not. I mean, and if you are, I guess tell me otherwise. I think it's silly, but if this is what you really intend, the assumption is is you're not just sprinting through all these places. You're walking through and looking at things, yeah, investigating stuff, etc. So you know, five ten yeah. minutes so far since you've left the party, basically. Okay. Uh, then I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna squeeze by him. Okay. Actually, I'll um, walk through him. I was gonna say, weird. there is no room to squeeze by him. It's either through him or over him. I hope he gets a chill as I walk through him. Uh, you are walking through him, and he starts awake, and he goes, <laughs> um, and he kind of, like, reaches about, and he just kind of, like, looks. He's like... And he speaks, um... And you don't understand what he says. He says something in giant, but he seems like like creeped out, right? He seems just like, what yeah. the fuck? All you know, right, kind of like fuck that guy. <laughs> um, and then you come out on the other side, and you can see you're on the north side of the actual um the massive cavern with the uh the immense um spire at which sits the top. Uh, the top of it is Madgoth's castle, right? Okay, so while while you're doing that, um, Bones, swapping over to you, 
You are Maybe. invisible and um, skulking through the southern passageways I'm a where you all had originally met Gravelock, right? I need you to roll me a... Roll me a 1d20. Okay. I rolled a 13. Okay. Um, all right. Sounds like a plan. Um, where would you like to go? Um, I would like to uh, beeline it for those uh, sections I can't see on the east side of the map. Okay, so this is where you had originally this found Gravelock eastward of here, right? Um, so you're wanting to go down these tunnels? Yes. Okay, so as you approach, you do not hear that humming that you had that had alerted you the previous time. Um, mm -hmm. So you head down one of the tunnels and you see no oh, stone giant just kind of like waiting for you or anything like that. Um, but what you do see is here in this location, um, there are abstract carvings uh, covering almost every single surface here um, with chiseled bits of stone uh, scattered all over the floor. Um, there... There's a, a kind of like a rush of wind heading towards the northeast. Um, and there's kind of a, a damp, musty smell here. Um, and you can see kind of like where you had previously seen Gravelock. There's, um, there's basically the, the impression of a butt um, <laughs> in, in the floor. Um, facing the wall that he had been facing, like like that's a favorite sitting spot or something along those lines, right? Solid. All right, cool. I, I mean, if nothing, if nothing's ingressing on me, I'd like to move on through. Uh, seems fine. Uh, uh, feel free to maneuver your token in the direction that you are most interested. Okay, I will just work my way around the wall here. Okay. Uh, you find like a, another uh, section. So this room is filled with large upturned mushroom caps that are in turn filled with various items like um, o o oversized for you, sized for a uh, stone giant, right? Uh, hammers and chisels, um, odd shaped wedges, the size of like large dogs, right? Bundles of large logs and coils of rope as thick as your arm. Um, and the abstract carvings continue through here, though there are fewer of them and they seem kind of older, more, more kind of like faded, right? As if they have not okay. been worked on in some time. Okay, gotcha. So everything in here is big. Got it, mm -hmm. I leave. Super I work big. my way around. Okay. Tunnel. All right, uh, you come out of a tunnel... Uh, and you realize you're on the southeast edge of the giant open cavern where mm -hmm. the the spire is and where you had battled against um, um, Kurok. Um, yeah, so where do you want to go from here? Well, I'd like to follow the path around. Okay, keep going. As far as here. All right, so you come in, you see a, a little, like, uh, entryway that's rough carved, and, and you see a bigger cavern beyond it. You head into that section, and in, in here, this chamber, um, this is a pretty massive chamber. I mean, compared to the size of the the enormous cavern that you you just left, right? It's it's paltry, it's nothing. But compared to a lot of the other rooms, the other chambers that you've been in, this is a, this is a good-sized cavern, right? Um it it has um it the sound here right which you don't make really any sound but the rush of the wind does kind of make a sound um there's a kind of hollowness a, a kind of almost like an echo to the sound here almost kind of like the um like the hollowness of a large building like a cathedral or something like that right um and it looks like this place has been worked the walls have this kind of a, almost kind of like sculpting to them, like they've been sculpted into archways and buttresses and draperies, but all of them are unfinished. Every single one of them just seems like it's it's almost done, but it's not quite finalized, right? Um, 
And all over the place, there are carvings of giant whorls and spirals that cover the ceiling and the floor. Um, and, but most of them, again, they, they're not finished. They end in kind of like these abrupt blurs um, or just cut off entirely, right? The, the yep. whole effect of, of these massive swirls and the... the, uh, the almost kind of like cathedral-like architecture is relatively enchanting and inspiring, um, somewhat intimidating, but the partially ruined or missing pieces kind of throw off the overall effect, right? Um, if this were, were finished, it would be quite lovely. Um, and then uh, as a kind of like weird counter note, in the center, almost directly in the center of the chamber, there are these three dramatic crystal formations that kind of like erupt up out of the center of the the chamber itself. Each one is relatively big, uh, uh, about ten to ten feet wide or so, and about fifteen feet tall. Um, and they're basically they're very they're very um, almost kind of like uh, fantasy, like, wow-esque, like, crystals up out of the ground, like, uh, dull blue crystalline structures, exactly kind of like as you're, you're designing them, exact same type of situation, right? So, um, there's that, and then there's little broken shards of those, um, here or there around the base of them, but none of them of really substantial size. Um, where what what you you see um you see a egress um to the north south and east where would you like to go so there was there was wind is that coming from any particular direction uh, it seems to be coming from your back right and it's not a oh, heavy wind like or anything like in. that yeah it's not it's not it's just kind of like a lazy breeze that kind of like flows from the bigger cavern into this section okay does any path particularly look trodden more uh, trodden? yes so definitely the northern path looks the most traveled the eastern path is relatively traveled the the southern the southern path isn't really much of a path it's it's kind of like more of a crack in the wall uh not big enough for a a giant to have climbed through so this might be more natural or or just you know something that has been unfinished perhaps yeah, crack in the wall. Yeah. Um, and it's not trodden. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I think north is where they go, so I don't really want to go there. Um, I will go across. Okay, so you're going over to the east. All right, while that is happening, Ezra and Ashes, along with Moss Covered Rock Near Stream, I suppose, and Risk are yeah. waiting at the base of the tunnel that leads up to the sixth level of Undermountain. What are you guys doing while while you're just waiting? Well, you know, language barrier, so probably a lot of chin chin. Well, Risk actually speaks uh relatively well common now. Um it's I say relative well it's it's broken right um and he he needs things repeated here or there and his phrasing can be really off but compared to when you met him you know not that long ago where he didn't speak any of the traitor's tongue he's come quite a long way apparently he's been basically just doing lessons with um ballroom, ballroom the entire time I got so many B names. Yeah, yeah you traded out for H after you get mm -hmm. I did. You guys criticized me too much on the H's, so now it's all B's. B's. <laughs> yeah. well, B's for uh, days. Everyone would take what take the time right from the beginning to ritually cast comprehend language just as a precaution. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. You but go through the motions. And and yeah. actually it, that's a ten minute cast time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So actually, not and six seconds. Not much than ten minutes has. Not much more than ten minutes have passed. It's only been about ten, fifteen minutes since uh, Matashtai and Bones 
left on their exploratory mission. So, um, so Ezra just, you know, finishes his casting and, and is just prepared and ready. And, and Ashes is, you know, um, playing Chin Chin, but you're basically just playing Chin Chin with Risk because Moss doesn't have enough yeah, digits. Yeah, Moss throws odds every time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He only needs two digits. <laughs> yeah, but his digits, his digits face like this. Like he's got one digit here, and then he's got another digit over here, and then he's got another digit over there. So at any given time, he has to like, he has to be like, he just sits there and rotates. <laughs> right, <laughs> like it's well, it makes for a strange experience, but you can make it work, I'm sure. You know. Uh, but uh, what I intended to say was, I thought this would be a great opportunity. Now uh, that the, you know, number of people involved to kind of reduce a little bit to, uh, you know, ping Zalara and see if she's calm, collected, and able to talk about. Sure, yeah, okay. Cool. Hell yeah. All right, so what do you, what do you say? What what do you do? How, how do you broach this subject? So, What's happening? Uh, uh, you know, I, I think uh, the way it's been is I've been, you know, it's kind of been becoming a habit whenever I like want to want to talk to her. I just kind of like in, inevitably like reach for the hilt and just kind of like just place my hand on it. Sure. sure. Um, you feel her up when you're trying to talk to her. You stroke it. Happy Women's Month. <laughs> Our day is. I can't remember. That day was like day. that was like <laughs> two day. days that ago was, or something like yeah. that. One day. Uh, but uh, I'll I'll just be like, hey, Solar, are you you all right? About uh, what Artor brought up. I mean, I'm not thrilled, but I mean, I knew my sister was out there. I knew what she was. I Just... gotta say, that's uh, that's uh, quite the story. Two sisters, one following Salune and the other following Shar. Hale as old as time. I say that because I'm as old as time. And that He's seems, yeah. Uh, if what Ortor was saying is correct, that would be at very least a millennia, right? Closer to ten. Ooh, numbers are getting hard to comprehend. <laughs> you know what the crown wars are? I do not. Back at the birth of civilization, I say birth of civilization, we are a conceited folk. Back at the birth of elven civilization, at least here on Toral, there were... There were a great many kingdoms that originally arose from the Green Ones when they came across from the Fey Realm. There were ages of peace, prosperity, in the vacuum after the progenitor races fell. And it was just the Elves. I mean, there were more, there were others, but... We were the only ones doing anything. We were the only ones really existing, being, being civilized. The dragons and the giants were busy killing each other and had been for ages. And by the time we cropped up, they were all but done with it. So we just walked into a idyllic world that was ready for us to do whatever we wanted. The Crown Wars are where it all went wrong. Thousands of years of elves killing elves in a bid for supremacy. And at the end of it all, Basically just, we had done so much violence to ourselves that we never recovered. We made way for new peoples to populate the world. 
I fought in those wars. I died in those wars. And when I did, I became what I am now. And my sister carried me to the close of it all. I was there with her when the Ari Vandar were defeated at last. I was there when the Vishantar Empire fell and Ilifarn was free once more. And I thought that was going to be it. Done. The wars we had fought, we had waged, ended triumphant. And that we would... I mean, there'd always be evil to fight. Sure. I just didn't think it would be she says something happened to Caresta after that is everything that we had lived for everything that we had fought for what I had died for when it ended, there was, there was some hole in her that she couldn't fill. And it wasn't enough. Salune wasn't enough. And I don't know when but somewhere along the way, she turned to the darkness to fill that void. But we parted ways. There was nothing else that I could do about it. Was was it about as amicable as it could be? Not in the slightest. <laughs> So y'all are um, definitely on bad terms. She is the antithesis of everything that we strived for. I, I kind of figured with the whole... It wasn't long after we parted ways that she took the blood kiss. Don't make me Google it. It's, it's the curse of vampirism. Okay, gotcha. Uh, that and yeah. that's a term that that you would that be makes, that makes passingly that makes familiar with. It's just a, yeah. a colloquial way of saying you became a vampire. Vampirism. Um, we've that. That vampire, Arthur Moreland, talked about being rivals, having fought with Caresta many times in the past. I cannot count the number of times I have been wielded against her. Really? That's why I was originally down here. How I got in that damn stone to begin with. That Malar cult? Yeah. It was the half a front for her activities. Now, I don't want to overstep my bounds, and I maybe these things aren't connected, but back when we were with Salune she said something to you she 
Did that have anything to do with your sister? She told me she suspected Caresta was leading Jar's cult here. I hoped that it was not true. But I really didn't have any reason to suspect otherwise. It makes perfect sense. Um, and is exactly what I would expect of my sister. So, basically, Artor has confirmed what what Salune expect, uh, was assuming. Either my sister is here um, as the hand of Char, or someone's going through a lot of trouble to make it look like that's what's going on. When we found you, Mobar said that he was that that Borden was doing something to make an evil presence more present, more apparent. And you're also telling me that Mo Barna's clan have some potential ties to your sister and by association, Char. I mean, Malar and Char aren't exactly the staunchest of allies, but they have been known Don't to it. <laughs> work together in the past. Sure that she's going to lose no sleep over his passing. He tried to take me, Ashes. I rejected him. I told you that I didn't I didn't have I'm not gonna say like I didn't there wasn't darkness looming in his heart or or anything that I could see. Darkness. I just didn't... It just didn't feel right. I... Aren't we two peas in a pod? Right. Me with a crazy evil sister and you unsure about your father figure. You know, you would think that what Artor said, I would just immediately cast aside as false. But I'm not feeling that. I don't know if it's true. But with everything that's happened, all the things that he's done that's not adding up and with the divine block and everything, it's just got questions find answers so if it comes to it are you going to be able to fight your sister again if it comes to it are you going to be able to fight him I mean I have before. We used to all the time. It's sparring, right? It wasn't really fighting, but... And he'd kick my ass every time. Well... I have before. And it wasn't sparring. I've... been wielded in hands... trying... to end her. They just haven't been enough. Sounds like, uh... Sounds like I better step up then. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna make sure that you... feel that you made a good decision for once. 
for once. My bad. <laughs> Not meaning that all your previous attempts were failures. I'm or... sure. I'm sure. It's like, all right. I'm, I'm just gonna. Not mm. dig my grave any deeper. Keep digging that hole, yes. Yeah, yes. all right. Uh, hey, Chin Chin, guys, another round? And I think that is a great place <laughs> for us to go ahead and end this episode um, with a little bit of uh, role play there. Um, when we next visit, we will continue this exploration of the seventh level of the dungeon. There will be no travel shenanigans, no downtime activity shenanigans. There, there will be exploration. Three more hours oh. of role playing. Oh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, my apologies once more for the technical difficulties. We're hoping to sort them out in the near future. I've been, um, contacting isp repeatedly i'm not hoping for um, that at all hopefully we'll we'll have that all sorted soon. um so we uh we'll see you next time for more dungeon of the mad mage bye bye everybody hey everybody thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video consider leaving a like commenting or subscribing it really helps me out if you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.